Sporklers. Today I'm going to show you how to add a background image to grid quizzes. Learning this skill can liven up the presentation of a standard crossword puzzle, or it can be made an essential part of any puzzle you create. For today's example, we'll be making a crossword puzzle with a background image that fits the theme of that puzzle. First, we need to actually create the quiz. Click on the Create tab, and then select Create a New Quiz. When you are at the Create a New Quiz screen, select the grid type. As always, a grid size box will pop up. We don't know how big this puzzle is going to be, so for now we'll leave it at 12 by 12. Give ourselves a quiz name, and click Create. Once we get to the quiz creation screen, you'll notice that there's a spot for quiz image URL right there. But for now, we're going to leave that blank. First, start by filling in the description. Can you enter the vegetables that will make this crossword complete? We'll set the quiz timer for 10 minutes and put it in the Just for Fun category. As always, click Save Changes. Next, we head over to the Data tab. As you can see, the Data tab is filled by an entire white grid. Now that we're in the Data tab, we can start filling in our grid answers. So I'll just put carrot and cabbage, broccoli, bok choy, chard, and turn up into the grid so that I now have six possible answers. That's not a lot for a grid quiz, but it'll do for this example. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove or deactivate all of the cells that are not used as part of the puzzle. We do this by selecting the toggle cells button in the top row and clicking or dragging the mouse across each cell that is not going to be used. This is incredibly important because when we upload our background image, each of these black squares will be replaced by the background image. Up next, we need to generate the hints for our crossword. We do this by selecting the Generate Hints button, and it will give us three rows across and three rows down to fill in. And voila, we now have filled in all six clues. Before I put my background image in, you may notice that several rows and columns are not being used. We can fix that by going to the Grid Extras button, right above where our clues are generated, and changing the grid size. Now I have a grid that's 9 by 10 and uses every column and every row at least once. Now it's time to upload our image. When selecting an image, it is very important that we find something that fits the proportions of the grid we're working with. Since this grid is 9 squares wide by 10 squares long, we're going to need to find an image that is 9 by 10 in proportion. For this background, I found an image that I have cropped down to 360 by 450 pixels. Even though that's not the exact size of the grid, Sporkle software will stretch the image out so that it fits the constraints of the actual puzzle on the website. I just simply copy the image address, go to the Quiz Edit tab, and enter it in the Quiz Image URL. Click Save Changes, and then when I go back to the Data tab, my image is now in the background of my crossword puzzle and it looks so much more interesting and vibrant and pops off the page. Now, when we go to test the quiz, we can see that it's complete with our clues, our background image, and our filled in crossword. We're ready to go. And by practicing this way, we can use these skills to make more complicated background images that are necessary for the solution of that puzzle. With Photoshop skills and planning, you can create puzzles like this in no time flat. That's it for today, Sporklers. If you have any suggestions for future how-to videos, please leave them in the comments.
Don't forget to subscribe to the Sporkle YouTube channel and like this video. Thanks for watching, and happy sporkling!